Hello, my name is Peter, and today I'm going to talk about PR stress and UPR in the cancer cells. My speech has been divided into five parts. Uh, the first one is hypoxic microenvironment in cancer. The second one is roles of ER stress and UPR in cancer cells. The third one is transmissible ER stress. And the fourth is cancer treatment by targeting UPR protective pathways. And the number five is magnitude of ER stress and the differential outcomes in malignant cells. I want to talk about hypoxic tumor microenvironment first. Uh, the solid tumor rapidly outgrow their blood supply, um, leaving the tumor regions with oxygen sick concentrations significantly lower than those found in the healthy tissues. Um, hypoxic conditions leads to cancer cells with increased mutation rates and drug afflux and evasions of apoptosis, as well as decreased overall um, the cell proliferation, drug solubility, and secretion of soluble nutrients, and so on. I also want to talk about the summary of mechanism and pathways of HIF-mediated drug therapy failure. HIF-1 confers resistance to conventional therapies through a number of signaling pathways in apoptosis, autography, and DNA damage, and mitochondrial activity. P53, the drug afflux. In addition, hypoxia results in a decrease in pH and creates an acidic TME. Mechanisms by which the tumor acidic microenvironment leads to MDR, including a decreased concentration of the drug caused by iotropin, reduced aphtotic potential, genetic alteration, such as the P53 mutations, and elevated the activity of a multi-drug transporter, PGP. I also want to talk about the roles of ER stress and UPR in the cancer cells. Um, the inducers of <clears throat> ER stress in the tumor microenvironment. The uncontrolled proliferative capacity of malignant cells in growing tumors engenders hostile microenvironments characterized by high metabolic demand, hypoxia, nutrient limitation, and acidosis, which in turn provoke disruption of calcium and lipid homotasis in multiple cell types. Inhibiting this menu, collectively, these harsh conditions alter the protein folding capacity of the ER in both cancer cells and infiltrating immune cells, thereby promoting accumulation of misfolded or unfolded proteins with this organelle and consequently the ER stress. Oncogenic events in cancer cells further contribute to this state by elevating their global transcription and translation rates. The unfolded protein response, which is the UPR, is subsequently activated as an attempt to restore the ER homeostasis and promote um, adaptation 
to diverse in cells in the tumor. Certain therapeutic modalities can also trigger the ER stress in the cancer cells to alter their normal behavior in the tumor microenvironment. Depending on the magnitude of ER stress, the cell type and the specific pathological context, ER stress responses can have multiple effects, ranging from the circular reprogramming and adaptation to autography and apoptosis. Owing to the additive effects of virus ER stress. ER stressor concurrently enrich in the TME during the cancer initiation. Progression and therapy. Robust and persistent UPR activation is, most, is mostly evidenced in cancer cells and tumor infiltrating immune cells in vivo, which has been challenging to recapitulate, recapitulate under in vitro conditions. ROS, reactive oxygen species. And I also wanted to talk about the transmissible ER stress. ER stress can be transmitted from a primary ER stress cancer um, to neighborhood mirror cells in the TME through certain cancer cell released soluble factors, which may be TEVS, proteins, or even lactic acid. In addition, ER stress in recipient, in recipient mirror cells can be potentiated by a second signal through TLR4. Although the molecules still remain the same. And I want to talk about the immunosuppressive effects of TRS. TRS not only attenuates antigen presenting ability and impairs lipid metabolism of disease, but also increases CHOP expression and arginase 1 production of TAMS or MDCSCs all of which inhibits the activation and proliferation of T cells. Therefore, anti-tumor immunity is undermined and the cancer progression is promoted. There are two main ways, uh, two kind of strategies for cancer treatment by targeting the UPR protective pathways. Target strategy one, inhibit the UPR components. We know that UPR is a thing to release the cell from the ER stress and stop it causing the cell apoptosis. And if we can inhibit the UPR components, that will make the ER stress too strong to let the cell survive, then the cell will die. And another therapeutic strategy too is to increase the consistent severity of ER stress. Then it will cause the cancer cell apoptosis too. So these are two strategies for cancer treatment by targeting the UPR protective pathways. And the magnitude of your stress and its differential outcomes in malignant cells. Oncogenic pathways, alternation, 
in metabolism and the tumor microenvironment cause low grade but persistent ER stress responses, which stimulate multiple mechanisms that add cancer cell growth. Metastasis, tumor resistance, and angiogenesis and immune evasion. A terminal UPR can also cause dying of cells in response to excessive ER stress caused by misfolded protein accumulating in this organelle that exists. Multiple myeloma cells induced peroptotic ER stress responses through hyperactivation of PRKR, like ER kinase, the PERK. In uh, in karyotic translation, initiation factor two, <coughs> which is always called ELF2, and the activating transcription factor four, the ATF4, or C or EBP homologous protein. So this is the CHOP that we mentioned late earlier, arm of UPR. Due to ER stress reactions that increase immunogenic cell dyes, ICD, some cryptostic medicines such as ascroclines can induce anti-tumor immunity. Thus, UPR activation promotes life or death depending on the stress kind and its duration. Thank you for listening.